Earlier this month, just a couple of days into the new year, a very odd and dramatic thing happened in Washington, D.C. The Deputy Attorney General of the United States, Rod Rosenstein, basically the supervisor of the special counsel in charge of the Russia investigation, and the FBI director, Chris Wray, made an unannounced visit to Capitol Hill. Reporters there spotted Rosenstein entering House Speaker Paul Ryan's office, and Ryan's spokesperson confirmed that the Deputy Attorney General and the FBI director had requested the meeting. And what made this unannounced meeting particularly dramatic was that at that moment, the Justice Department was in the middle of this really big, ugly fight with a group of House Republicans, a group led by this guy, Devin Nunes, a California Republican and chair of the House Intelligence Committee. He was a member of the Trump, Trump transition team. And while because of that, he technically has recused himself from all things Trump and Russia, he's been leading the most aggressive efforts in Congress to try and undercut the Mueller investigation and to try to create alternative scandals that the White House likes better. For months, Nunes has been issuing subpoenas to the Justice Department, demanding that they turn over documents related to the ongoing Russia investigation. And for months, the Justice Department has been pushing back, telling Nunes that turning over that information would jeopardize an active counterintelligence investigation. Undeterred by those warnings from the DOJ, last month, House Republicans began moving to hold Rosenstein and Ray in contempt of Congress. And so on January 3rd, when Rosenstein and Ray showed up at Paul Ryan's office, they were there to ask for House Speaker Paul Ryan's help. They were hoping Paul Ryan would get Devin Nunes to back off. They did not get Paul Ryan's help. Instead, Speaker Ryan sided with Devin Nunes. And when Ray and Rosenstein emerged from that meeting, Nunes announced that the DOJ had agreed to provide access to everything he had requested. The compromise appeared to be that the documents would not be handed over to Nunes. Instead, the chairman and a handful of designated people from the House Intelligence Committee would go into a secure room at the DOJ to review them. But there was one document that the DOJ deemed so sensitive, Chris Ray opted to personally show it to Devin Nunes himself. And apparently what Devin Nunes then proceeded to do was to take in all of those classified documents about an ongoing counterintelligence investigation and turn around and put that information into a set of talking points, a memo laying out a supposed conspiracy inside the FBI and inside the Justice Department to undermine the Trump campaign and the Trump presidency. Now, if you've been watching or listening to or reading any right wing media over the past week, you know this is all anyone on the right has been talking and tweeting about. This secret memo that's going to bring down the whole Russia investigation, that's going to reveal the conspiracy at the heart of the Justice Department, and that's going to blow up the deep state. Republicans on the Intelligence Committee voted last week to make that talking points memo available to the entire House. Now they're poised to vote to release it publicly. The Justice Department this week called that plan, quote, extraordinarily reckless and also charged that Congressman Nunes would be violating the terms of that deal they struck earlier this month in Paul Ryan's office. But Devin Nunes says, nope, that deal does not prevent them from doing anything. As for Paul Ryan, well, the Speaker's office sent us this statement, quote, as previously reported, the Speaker's only message to the department was that it needed to comply with oversight requests and there were no terms set for its compliance, which I think means Paul Ryan is saying, sorry, Justice Department, he's siding with Nunes again. But there's one other person who got access to all those classified documents under the deal the Justice Department struck with Nunes, and that is the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff. And he sent us this statement, quote, access to the underlying materials used by the majority to produce its talking points memo was limited to the chairman or designee. That's Nunes, ranking member, that's Schiff, and appropriate staff. The majority doesn't dispute this, but makes the absurd claim that after reviewing the materials, the agreement did not preclude them from sharing the information with any other members of Congress. If that were true, there was no point to limiting access to the materials in the first place. The majority is in clear violation of its commitment to the Justice Department. So this is pretty remarkable, right? The Trump Justice Department is allied with House Democrats in a fight against House Republicans. And this fight and all the hyperventilating on the right about this memo, all of this may just feel like background noise given 
all of the other things that are broken in the Russia story in just the past 24 hours, let alone the past week. But here's one reason why this may be really important. We are, of course, still in the midst of the fallout from last night's bombshell New York Times report that the president gave the order to fire special counsel Robert Mueller back in June and only backed off because the White House counsel threatened to quit rather than carry out that order. That story, which has now been confirmed by NBC News and several other outlets, and that Trump described today as fake news, has ignited fears that Donald Trump may try to fire Robert Mueller again. But Mueller is not the only person that Trump considered firing. According to the Times, quote, another option that Mr. Trump considered in discussions with his advisors was dismissing the deputy attorney general, Rod J. Rosenstein. Trump has frequently taken shots at Rosenstein in the past, and he is said to still be furious that Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself and put Rosenstein in charge of the Russia investigation. We also know that Republicans have been on a mission to discredit FBI and Justice Department officials who have played key roles in the Trump-Russia investigation, particularly those who might be able to corroborate fired FBI Director James Comey's testimony that Trump pressured him to end that investigation. Just tonight, Murray Wass reports at Foreign Policy that Trump, quote, pressed senior aides last June to devise and carry out a campaign to discredit senior FBI officials after learning that those specific officials were likely to be witnesses against him as part of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. And we don't know exactly what is in this memo Devin Nunes put together. But Betsy Woodruff and Spencer Ackerman at the Daily Beast reported this week that it targets three people in particular. Quote, a controversial Republican memo alleging surveillance abuse specifically names FBI Director Andrew McCabe and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, along with former FBI Director James Comey. And when it comes out, these current and former officials are likely to face even more criticism from the right over their involvement in FBI counterintelligence work. So Comey's gone. McCabe is on his way out. He's being retired at the ripe old age of 49. But how about Rosenstein? Is it his time in the barrel next, to use an old Roger Stoneism? Especially after last night's New York Times report. All the attention and energy has been focused on the potential for Trump to fire Mueller. But what if it's not Mueller he's after? Listening to Republican members talk about uh, a coup and talk about a criminal activity in the FBI, that will encourage the president to think that he can fire Mueller with impunity, or perhaps even more pernicious from my point of view, fire Rod Rosenstein, put in place someone who will tell, Rod, to, will tell Bob Mueller privately, you cannot look into these issues, you cannot follow the money. Congressman Adam Schiff, ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee on this program last month, saying it would be even more pernicious to fire Rod Rosenstein than to fire Bob Mueller. Is that true? And what would happen if Trump did it anyway? Joining us now is Neil Katyal, former acting solicitor general back in 1999 when he worked in the Justice Department under then Deputy Attorney General Eric Holder. He helped write the very rules that allowed for the appointment of special counsels like Robert Mueller. And today he has a new op-ed in the Washington Post. Yes, Trump can fire Mueller, but a normal president would know not to try it. Mr. Katyal, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you being here tonight. Privilege to be with you, Dre. So let's talk about, uh, you, you wrote in this op-ed a couple of points. Uh, the first point, um, and I'll read a little bit of your op-ed, is that at this moment, many wish for legal restrictions in the special counsel regulations that would block Trump from firing Mueller. But rules can only do so much. Institutions are often what matters. Our system instead depends on two weapons, separation of powers and the election of individuals with character and judgment. Right now, both of these are lacking. When you write that, which uh, officials who are lacking the character and determination did you have in mind? Well, I definitely have in mind the president. And, you know, I think it's important to take a step back and understand what, you know, you call this bombshell New York Times report actually means, this idea that the president tried to fire Mueller. I really do think that we are very possibly seeing the end of the Trump presidency as a result of those revelations. And those are not words I use lightly, but this is the first time I've said anything like this. 
and it is because of two things. One is the legal stuff we've been talking about. There's an open investigation by Mueller of Trump for obstruction of justice, for firing Comey, for demanding a loyalty oath. Everyone around him seems to be incapable of telling the truth when it comes to Russia, 19 separate lies about who was meeting with the Russians and the like. And so you've got the elements of cover-up, and that's what people have been talking about today. But there's a second thing, a non-legal aspect to this, which I think is even more important, and that is, does this person have the character, to pick up the words of the op-ed, to be the president of the United States? You know, Trump was asked about whether he was thinking about firing Mueller in August of 2017, and he said he, quote, hadn't given it any thought. And he sent his lawyer out, John Dowd, to say firing Mueller's, quote, never been on the table, never. And it's a manifestation of the media. And Kellyanne Conway said similar things. And I can't imagine that a president would say those things after what he did two months earlier in trying to fire Mueller. I can't imagine his advisors did it. I can't imagine a lawyer to the president who's bound by all sorts of ethical rules and so on would say that and not at least correct the record later on. And so there's a very severe credibility problem with the president whenever Russia comes up. And, you know, just think about it. If we knew all of this stuff before, you've been talking about the Devin Nunes antics and this memo and so on. If we knew all of this stuff for the last seven months, the last seven months have been a debate that Trump has started about Mueller being biased against him and the FBI being biased and so on. It would have been sure helpful to know, well, the president tried it with some bogus three rationales to try and fire Trump back in June and was rebuffed. And fire Mueller. I you know, but you then mentioned Paul Ryan and Devin Nunes, because in order for a president to be held accountable, and we're going to get in a moment to whether or not he can be held legally accountable if he committed crimes while in office. But on the political side, the Constitution provides impeachment. But we already know that the Speaker of the House has sided not once but twice with Devin Nunes, who is on a fishing expedition as chairman of the, House, of the House Intelligence Committee to essentially smear the FBI and attack the Justice Department. So far, the Speaker of the House up to now has not restrained, attempted to restrain Devin Nunes or even to impede what he's doing. He's essentially given him an open door, which could result in some classified or some important sensitive information being sent to the whole House for political use. How then can we have confidence that it could be the end of the Trump uh, administration? Would Republicans, those Republicans I just described, ever hold him accountable? I mean, you're right. If you just look at the past year and what Republicans in Congress have been doing, I mean, James Madison wouldn't be proud, nor would Ronald Reagan. I mean, there is allegation of very serious wrongdoing by the president and the campaign. There have been guilty pleas around this and so on, and yet they, you know, act like ostriches. So, yes, I think right now they are to blame, for par partially to blame for this. But I hold out hope that when these facts come out and if the Mueller investigation is allowed to proceed, that no one will be able to look at this and not say, boy, this looks like an attempted cover-up at the very least. Yeah. And this is a president who is not shy about his assault on the rule of law. And very quickly, we don't have much time. Uh, you also write that there is a concern that rather than just firing Mueller outright, uh, that uh, Donald Trump could essentially put in, uh, fire Rod Rosenstein and put an uh, assistant attorney general in place who would slow walk and bleed the, admin, the, uh, the Mueller investigation. How concerned are you that that could happen? Well, I am concerned. I mean, I think this administration and this president tries to do anything possible to undermine the rule of law wherever he can. And if that's putting different appointees in place, that may be it. And yes, we've been blaming Republicans, but there's one Republican tonight that I don't think we should be blaming, and that is Rod Rosenstein. Trump's a guy. President Trump nominated him to be deputy attorney general and put him in that position. And now the president doesn't trust him. He's been doing a good job in supervising the investigation, and I do think it'd be a constitutional calamity if something were to happen to Rosenstein. All right, Neil Katyal, former acting solicitor general. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching.